Hello friends and welcome again to the class. Today friends we will discuss about the importance of environment at the early stage of learning. So friends this will give you a better understanding of what constitutes the meaning and scope of environment and how environment influences us from the moment we are born and how we are as human beings and impact of our environment for better or for the worse. We will also review in this chapter as to why it is important to give children the space and opportunities to discover, explore and develop as all round individual within their environment. So friends, for many of us the word environment is associated with say forest or trees or pollution and so on. This is not an incorrect association. When we talk about environment, everyone will have some or the other concept about that. As I have t told you about forest, these are the concepts that first comes to our mind when we talk about environment. And as I have said that this is not a correct association, but what I would rather say is that these are the limited association of the word or of the term environment. In doing this exercise, you have already expanded the sphere of the word environment. If you were told that your words are somewhat limited, you may have started to wonder that what are the things, what are the words that you have missed. Let us say that environment is simply the world around us, starting with our skin and reaching out in all the directions in ever widening circle until it embraces the universe. Would you agree? So friends, the word environment is derived from the French word environner. The word environment has been derived from the French word environner, which means to encircle or surround. So friends, as we got the meaning of the term environner as encircle or surround, then the literal meaning of the word connotes all that which surrounds us or the world around us. So what does the world that surround us include? So what is the term of the environment that which surrounding us? It includes the natural environment and the socio-cultural environment taken in this sense has no limits. It is whole, continuous and invisible. It is common to all living organisms like plants, animals and also the humans. The air, the water, the rocks, the plants and the animals are much and much a part of the environment as we all human beings are. This is what we share with all other living organisms. So friends, broadly speaking, the environment can be considered as a composition of different aspects. And these different aspects are the natural environment, So the natural factor, this includes abiotic factors that surrounds us like air, water, soil, rocks. So these natural factors that includes all the abiotic factors around us such as air, water, soil, rocks and landforms as well as the biotic elements. The biotic elements consisting of plants, animals and microorganisms. So friends, now that we have come to know the elements of the environment are the natural environment which includes abiotic factors like air, water and the rocks and the biotic factors such as plants, animals and microorganisms. As you know, plants, animals and microorganisms are interdependent on each other and on the basic necessities like air, water and nutrients. 
So, these interdependencies lead to a variety of interaction between the organisms and the environment. Next friends, there is one more element which is called as human made environment. In this human made environment, this human made environment which has been twisted by human for own requirement. It includes the roads, the buildings, the industries, dams and other structures which provide goods and services to human being. So, this human made environment this includes roads, building, industries and so on for the benefit and service of the human being. Next friends, there is the socio-cultural environment. This includes the individual, family, community, religious and educational and economic and political institutions make our socio-cultural environment. This socio-cultural environment which includes community, religion, family, educational institution, political institution, economic and social institution. It is usually from the family that most key activities of society are carried out and one learns to live as a member of the society. Culture is shaped by the natural environment and the interactions between individual in a community. Culture differs from community to community and society to society. Our cultural characteristics like the food that we eat, the clothes that we wear, our traditions and norms are shaped by our natural environment. The values, the traditions, the norms, the customs, art, history, folklore, practice and followed by communities of individuals make up the socio-cultural environment. So friends, in a nutshell, environment is everything that surrounds us of which we are a part of it. A few thinkers have gone a step further by saying that environment includes all that within and outside us. Thus, we can say that environment includes not only the physical, geographical and biological conditions, but also the socio-cultural, economic and the political system. So friends, now let us talk about the importance of environment in the development of the child, how it helps in the development of the child. Friends, as we know that learning takes place first and foremost in the home and the family. Even when children join the school, the learning continues to take place not only in the school but at home and within the community. The immediate environment is the primary context to which the child relates. It includes not just the physical structure and outdoor spaces but equally the social and cultural world of the stories and songs, festivals and get-togethers, family and community celebrations and occasions. Valuable learnings also take place through interaction with the immediate environment. Everyday environment, seasons, heat, rain, cold, the sky, the sun, the moon, the different aspects of water, plants and the animals. Sadly, caught up as they are the busy routine of timetables, homework and examinations, children do not have much time and space to really explore and immerse themselves in these experiences. Most curriculum do not provide the time and space for the joy of discovery and experiences true of life. Children, especially the young children, have a natural desire to learn and make sense of the world around them. It is critical that they are provided with an environment that enables and supports this learning. The NCF 2005 recognizes this unique characteristics as well as the opportunity as learning in the early years must hence be directed by the child's interest and priorities should be given to contextualize by structured formally. Now friends about the importance of 
environment in the development of the child. Learning takes place first and foremost in home and the family. Even when children join the school, learning continues to take place not only in the school but at home and within the community. The immediate environment is the primary context to which the child relates. It includes not just the physical structure and indoor spaces but equally the social and cultural world of stories, songs, festivals and get-togethers, family and the community celebrations and interaction with the immediate environment. Everyday children experiences the natural environment, seasons, heat, rain, cold, the sky, the sun, the moon and different aspects of water, plants and animals. But sadly caught up as they are in the busy routine of timetables, homework and examinations, children do not have the time and space to really explore and immerse themselves in the experiences. Most curriculum do not provide the time and space for the joy of discovery and experiences true to life. Children, especially the young children, have a natural desire to learn and make sense of the world around them. It is critical that they are provided with an environment that enables and supports this learning. The NCF 2005 recognizes this unique characteristic as well as the opportunity as learning in the early years must hence be directed by the child's interest and priorities and should be contextualized by him or her experiences rather than being structured formally. An enabling environment for child would be that it reach in stimulation and experiences that allow children to explore, experiment and freely express themselves and one of these is embedded in social relations that give them a sense of warmth, security and trust. Now friends, how to link environment to the child? Friends, it is very important for the teacher to have a link between the environment and the child because as we know we are the most important part of this environment and also environment is very much associated with us. The period of 8 years from class 1 to class 8 is one of the tremendous development of the child. During this period there is a shaping of physics reasoning, intellect, emotions and social skills as well as values, attitudes that provide a strong lifelong foundation. During this period, the child is not only developing the foundations of academic learning but is also learning for life. The learning for life take place within this includes every aspect of the world around us. Poverty exposes children to terrible risk to their health development and education. They suffer severely as they have to undergo a poor environment. Once the environment is polluted, all children become the first prey of the situation. They are at greater risk from environment hazards. They are different from adult in their physical size immature organs, metabolic rate, behavior, natural curiosity and lack of knowledge with the current trend of environmental degradation. They have fewer places to escape also. So they can even be exposed to harmful environmental hazards before birth and on the other hand, children are dynamic and powerful forces for environmental protection also. They do have natural interest in nature and can easily be made instrumental for protection and preservation of their environment. They can easily be indulged in environmental activities and can contribute effectively also. The link between children and environment has been recognized in many international declarations and arguments over the past decades. To mention a few of those are by Convention on the Rights of the Child 1989. They say that to combat disease and malnutrition 
including within the framework of primary health care plan of action for implementing the work declaration, the survival protection and development of children 1990. To improve the environment by combating disease and malnutrition and promoting education. The Habitat Agenda 1990 said that the needs of children and youth particularly with regard to their living environment have to be taken fully into account. Declaration of Environment Leaders of Aid on Children's Environment Health 1997, they say that children face significant threats to health from an era of environmental hazards. They are particularly vulnerable to pollution and prevention of exposure to this single most effective means of protecting children against environmental threats. According to G8 Environment Minister's Communique 2001, development policies and implementation action to provide children with a safe environment including during prenatal as well as the postnatal development towards the highest attainable level of health. The Berlin Commitment for Children of Europe and Central Asia in the year 2001 said that protect all children irrespective of social and economic conditions they live in from the environmental threats. Also create child respecting urban and rural environments which enable all children to have access to a range of play and informal learning opportunities both at home and within their local communities. The special session on children of the United Nations General Assembly in May 2002 provided an opportunity to world leaders to formally adopt principles together with a series of supporting action to make a world safe for children. And the 10 principles given by them are leaving no child out, put children first, care for every child, fight HIV AIDS, stop harming and exploiting children, listen to children, educate every child, protect children from war, protect the art for children and fight poverty, invest in children. Degraded environmental conditions and other physical hazards are common and inseparable for the poor densely populated cities where infectious diseases can spread rapidly. The air, the soil, the water pollution do not spare the children poor or rich. Unlimitedly, the unhealthy environment affects all types of children what to speak about their education. The NCF 2005 page number 15 also emphasizes these points with respect to the environment and children's learning. All children are naturally motivated to learn and are capable of learning making meaning and developing the capacity for abstract thinking, reflection and work are the most important aspects of learning. Learning can in a variety of way through experience, making and doing things, experimentation, reading, discussion, asking, listening, thinking and reflecting and expressing oneself in speech, movement or writing both individually and with others. They require opportunities of all these kinds in the course of their development. Learning also takes place both within the school and outside the school. Learning is enriched if the two areas interact with each other. For this to happen, children need to be given adequate opportunities to relate to the environment around them, both physical and social to nurture their curiosity, to do things, to ask questions and to pursue investigations and share the learning about the environment. So friends, as facilitator of this experience, you have the challenge of creating suitable opportunities for not only these experiences, but also developing in the children the attitudes, the values that will transform this into lifelong learning. This is the broad aim of education for sustainable development. So friends, the term environment is understood in different ways. As you have read so far, environment covers a wide canvas 
starting with the self and expanding to cover every aspect of the world around us. I hope this chapter and the discussion that we had done in this class will help you to deliver your lecture on environment in the class as well as this will directly help the children in their development and linking the environment to the child. Thank you very much.